The dangerous sea route from Cuba to Florida has seen off yet another endurance swimmer trying to complete it. On Wednesday, Australian swimmer Chloe McCardell abandoned her swim attempt because of a really bad jellyfish sting. She was only about 11 hours into a 60-hour swim. She's recovering in hospital. CNN's Patrick Oppmann's in Havana. She joins me now. Um, Patrick, uh, he, how is she doing? You know, she was just covered in jellyfish things, not only on her arms and her shoulders, uh, her face, but actually on her tongue. If you can't imagine anything as painful as that, and that's really why they had to cut this attempt short, because they felt that the stings, uh, she had so many of them on her tongue and around her mouth, they could have cut her breathing off. Essentially, uh, she could have died uh, from these jellyfish stings. So uh, that's why, after about 11 hours of swimming, they cut this attempt short, and she's doing very well. She's actually well enough to hold a press conference a little while ago where she announced that she's throwing in the hat uh, that she's not going to try this crossing again. Of course, uh, Chloe McCardle has swum the English Channel some six times, is a very accomplished swimmer, but just said that the Florida Straits apparently was too much for her. And, you know, she was very concerned about the jellyfish before she left yesterday. Had even picked June as being a month that historically has less jellyfish uh, along the Gulf Stream, but apparently there were just too many for her last night. You know, she even said to she and some of the scientists she was working with had tried to develop a cream that would keep jellyfish away. Uh, they weren't able to get that cream ready in time, though, so it's just going to be uh, one of those what-ifs if they had that cream, if they had some other things that could have kept those jellyfish away. But at this point, we'll never know because apparently Chloe McCardle is not going to try this crossing again. Oh, Zane. no, and she, she, she was training for like six months or so, you know, for this moment. Other than the jellyfish, I mean, what are the other challenges between Cuba and Florida? I mean, the currents, the weather, I mean, what, what about other dynamics in the water? Uh, you know, uh, a body of water full of sharks. And, of course, you know, the whole thing of this is you're not swimming in a shark cage. They have some devices that uh, irritate sharks. I'm not sure sw swimming next to sharks that are irritated is much better. But uh, the idea is they can at least try to keep the sharks away from you. But there are really no guarantees. This is so dangerous. You know, if, if it were easier, people would have done it before. It's being described as the Mount Everest of swims. Uh, many, many people have wanted to do this, have tried to do this. Still, though, at this point, no one has accomplished it. I'm sure other people will try again very soon, though, Zane. Patrick Oppmann, thanks so much. Yeah, that's right, the sharks. Forgot about those. The Cuba-Florida stretch has become something, as he was saying, of a holy grail for long-distance swimmers. Last year, American swimmer Diana Nyad attempted the swim for a fourth time. Almost three days into the swim, the multiple jellyfish stings forced her to give up as well. Diana joins us now live from L.A. Great to have you on the show, Diana. Just explain to our audience just how hard this is for a swimmer like yourself. You know, Zane, if, if you and I took the entire nautical chart of all the Earth's surface, so the Earth is four-fifths water, we could pick out 100 miles here, 100 miles there. None of it would be easy. That's a long, long way for a swimmer. But none of it. There isn't one passage on this Earth that is as difficult as this one because of the roiling currents of the Gulf Stream, the very dangerous predator sharks. And as Chloe found out, and I'm so sorry she, she experienced that pain last night, um, she found out that the jellyfish are the most there are the most venomous animals on in the ocean today the box jellyfish just describe to us because most of us barely make it down to the gym for a couple of lengths and we'll never experience what it's like or a, a, to have a jellyfish sting in the ocean that far that deep and that bad what, what's it actually like and when it's happening what is what how does it affect you well, there are thousands of species of jellyfish from just a little something that can sting your hand and you might yell out for a second and then it, then it disappears quickly. The box jellyfish is trying to take down your heart and your lungs, and it does. I'm glad Chloe's alive. I'm glad I lived through them. I was stung three times by them now. You feel like you've been dipped in hot, burning oil. You, I, I screamed out, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, somebody help me. You don't even know where you were stung when you get out, you see all the markings and the wrappings of the tentacles around you. But when it happens, they're, they're working on paralyzing your heart and your lungs. Then you go into debilitative vomiting. I mean, it's really a, the, it's the most venomous animal in today's oceans.
well, given that, and then there's the small problem of sharks as well, I mean, what kind of psychological prep preparation do you and Chloe uh, and other people who want to do something like this actually go through, like psychologically, because you're putting your life at risk under a microscope for the world to watch? You know, it's extreme. Uh, we, we, Chloe and I, and there are really, as far as I know, there's only really one other Australian swimmer at this time on this planet who could maybe make this swim. And um, I've been trying an awful long time. I tried 35 years ago. That's how old I am. Um, and I'm going to try one more time this summer and just walk away from it, either having touched the floor to shore or feeling that I can stand tall and say there's nothing more I can bring to it. I, I'm at the end of discovery. I'm at the end of my will. But um, I'll tell you, it's, it's hard to describe what the brain goes through after those hours. Last year, I swam for 51 hours in my attempt before, you know, the whole thing fell apart with the stings, the currents. It's usually wow. not just one thing. Um, and Chloe, I'll tell you, is uh, she has my admiration. You know why? When people stand on the sidelines and criticize size that, that doesn't that doesn't move me when somebody gets in and puts that kind of courage and effort into something then I'm going to applaud them and today I applaud Chloe McCardle